Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, the one and only Adrian Chambly, and today I'll be reviewing Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers was released in 1985 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was a launch title for the NES and helped save the gaming industry in the 1980s. It was developed by Shigeru Miyamoto, who also developed the original Donkey Kong and Super Mario arcade games which of course also starred Mario. Anyways, the game would go on to become a huge success, selling 40 million copies worldwide. Granted, it was bundled with the NES, but I feel it would have been a huge success regardless. Story time. Mario and his brother Luigi are plumbers from Brooklyn who are transported to the Mushroom Kingdom. There, they must rescue Princess Toadstool from the evil King of the Koopas himself, Bowser. As for the gameplay, it's simple. You go from point A to point B while trying to avoid enemies and bottomless pits in the process. And by enemies, I mean Koopas, Goombas, Lakitus that drop spinies, bloopers, cheap cheeps, piranha plants, bullet bills, buzzy beetles, and the worst enemy of all time, Hammer Brothers. All these things will try and kill you on your quest to save the princess. Mario's line of defense consists of jumping on enemies and using special items. Mario himself is pretty weak, one hit from an enemy and you lose a life. However, there are items you can get that will help you on your journey. The Super Mushroom will turn you into Super Mario and you'll be able to take one extra hit. The Fire Flower will give you the ability to shoot fireballs from your hand and it'll be extremely helpful in water levels. However, you have to be Super Mario in order to use the Fire Flower, and if you get hit by an enemy, you revert back to regular Mario. You also have coins that are spread out through every level, and if you collect a hundred of them, you'll be able to get an extra life. Speaking of which, there are special 1-Up Mushrooms that will grant you extra lives as well. They are rare to find, so be sure to pick them up when you see them. And last, but certainly not least, there is the Star Man. The Star Man grants you invincibility for a limited time, so now you can deal out touch damage to enemies. Yeah, it doesn't feel so good now, does it? There are 8 worlds total, and each world has 4 levels, and every 4th level is a castle where you fight Bowser himself at the end. Or should I say, a fake clone of him. You won't face the real Bowser until the final level of the game, so get used to seeing this at the end of the first 7 castles. Other levels consist of your basic daytime, nighttime stages, underground stages, treetop stages, bridge stages, and the water levels that I mentioned earlier. A lot of the levels have their own set of secrets too. You could go down pipes that will take you to areas filled with coins. You could go up special bean stocks that will take you to the clouds and those are filled with even more coins. And of course you have warp pipes that will transport you to different worlds which is great for speed running. And finally I have to mention a 2 player option. When you play 2 player mode, Player 1 will be Mario, and Player 2 will be Luigi, and each player will progress on their own. So there's no teamwork here, Luigi plays exactly like Mario, and he won't get the floaty jump he's known for until the sequels. The sound of this game is very iconic, from the sound it makes when you get a super mushroom, to the 1-up sound effect. The sounds of this game are super nostalgic. The same goes for the music. Everybody knows the iconic World 1-1 theme. And who can forget the Starman theme? The music and sound effects of this game has stood the test of time. One flaw I have with the game though is the controls. They seem pretty stiff to me, especially when it comes to making certain jumps. And I don't know if it was just me, but playing this game on the NES Classic was a complete pain. The controls were unresponsive at times and caused a lot of unfair deaths. Which is the reason why I chose to review the Switch version. The controls felt way more responsive to me, and I have the ability to use the more comfortable Pro Controller. But the jumping was still stiff at the end of the day. Overall, this game still holds up pretty well. It's challenging yet fun, and if you don't give up, you too can take down Bowser and become a super player. Overall, I'll give this game a C+. The gameplay is addictive and the music and sounds are nostalgic, but the controls can be a pain at times, and some of the enemies are pretty cheap. I'm looking at you, Hammer Brothers. Thank you very much for watching my video, ladies and gentlemen. If you like this video, be sure to smash that like button, give that subscribe button a good KO punch, and I'll see you next time. Thank you once again. You all have a nice day. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. And remember, geek, gimmick, and nerd culture is for everyone, so let's keep things fun.